In my last video, I resuscitated my series of overviews of different manuals and methods and materials that I myself have used to study languages over the years by presenting some of the DLI basic courses that you can get here. And the reason I pointed out that I did not make this uh, when I was doing that series about four or five years ago is that they've really only been digitized and made available in the past uh, two years or so. And somebody wrote to me and said that uh, one reason for that might be that although they've never been copyrighted, they were classified information for much of that time. So uh, they're available now, and they're excellent for using to get from intermediate to advanced level, as I pointed out. But their uh, state of preservation, their quality, leaves a lot to be desired. And uh, as a sort of a comment to that uh, on that video, and question I get a lot anyway, is uh, these older materials are very nice and, and good in that sense, but yes, they are kind of frustrating to use, even if you can get a physical copy of them. And aren't I aware of any really new, current, cutting edge, uh, particularly online, freely available uh, type materials for language learning? And I have to say that uh, there I've kind of reached the, the limits of my own personal experience and what I can recommend. As I just said, I did most of my actual learning going on 15 more years ago now for really learning new languages and I had to stop that and concentrate on developing languages that uh, I've learned since then. So my concern more is now for finding materials that I can use to get from an intermediate level and continue advancing and just in general, uh, although the technology, the delivery of, of uh, a lot of currently being developed uh, materials, online materials is very nice. Just in terms of their content, I don't think that they can match up to uh, the, the older materials. So for my money, yes, still the uh, kind of older materials you can get digitized at this site uh, for language learning. I showed you this site last time as well. Language ebooks uh, in general uh, are uh, my main use and to me the, the fascinating and wonderful thing about this whole uh, digital revolution that we're living through. Uh, when I was writing my dissertation on the Icelandic sagas at the University of Chicago 20 years ago, uh, most of them were in the library there. Some were not. I had to go to interlibrary loan and physically order them and wait for a good two weeks for them to come from somewhere else, whereas now I can go to the Icelandic saga database and get them in the original, modernized Icelandic, and, and basically anything I want. But back to uh, learning materials, yes, I mean, um, if you have followed my whole series, you know who I am, you're not just stumbling across this video, you'll know that the, the, my favorite method is Asinil, which has a bilingual uh, uh, text columns, and I also really like the linguaphone method, which is similar but in different books, and the Cortina method, also bilingual, and I was also very excited and found got a lot of use in the uh, some of the older Berlitz methods, the Berlitz self-teachers and the Berlitz self-teaching uh, manuals, where you had material presented actually in an interlinear format. Both interlinear and bilingual format, I think, are excellent for uh, autodidactic self-teaching learning. Uh, teachers in schools don't like them because they sort of make the teacher uh, unnecessary. Uh, but if you want to get things like that, for example, you go to text kit here and you can get things like uh, this guy, uh, these guides to the classics where you have not just interlinear but uh, interspersed Latin to English. But again, you see here, here the quality of this text is frustrating to use, hard to see. Um, other things that you can get digitized, obviously Google Books is uh, incredible, trying to make all the world's books online and for language learning, for instance, you can get something like this is Jan Comenius is the great uh, uh, Renaissance humanist who's Orbis Pictus of Latin uh, bilingual columns here with uh, French and, uh, and, and German. Uh, and yes, it's nice to have these older books, particularly if you can get the feel and smell of them. Uh, printing them out or looking at them online is kind of frustrating though. So one place, one site that I can recommend uh, as an exciting development is this place called Poodle. And at one fell swoop, Poodle, this paro parakeet here, um, really addresses a lot of the concerns that I have articulated in, uh, in some of my more recent videos, for example, moving from intermediate to advanced level. There is a new company, they're just uh, starting out really, 
and they are focusing first and foremost on materials for uh, intermedia learners. So I think this is something that the whole language learning community is, is knows about. Uh, marketers uh, just make basic materials uh, because most people don't get very far and then well, it's a harder thing to get from intermediate to advanced anyway uh, and there's a really a dearth of materials out there. So. Um, this site is cognizant of that and is aiming first and foremost at providing materials uh, that are helping uh, you uh, pro progress, but also the format here is exactly what I was just talking about, the basic SEMIL format of bilingual texts, and they are going and taking, I think, uh, some of, they're not uh, creating their own materials so much as they are taking some of these online materials and not just digitizing them, but uh, typing them up, making them anew, and as I talked about for the, uh, say, the DLI courses, some of the older materials that you can get, the Berlitz self-teaching methods, they never came with audio. So this site is taking some of these older materials and uh, they're recording them anew as well. Um, so uh, they do take not only the format, but uh, if we look at their, at their uh, tutorials uh, here, the a uh, way that they're talking about doing things is uh, with, they, they contacted me with my permission here, uh, they really advocate the same shadowing methodology and they even use my video until they can make their own about uh, materials, ways that you can take these older texts, bilingual texts with good recordings and uh, and shadow them. So if we look just if they've got one, uh, sorry, one demo up of exactly the kind of materials that they're doing. Interesting. Uh, readings, uh, not just uh, textbook materials, but interesting readings, but again, really perfectly adapted to um, the, the kind of methodology I've always used for learning. And if you're interested in doing this not with a book in hand like I did, but online, I think this is uh, really a place to, to look at. Um, having it online does things that uh, was never a major issue for me, but there are times when uh, you would say, well, okay, uh, here's a bilingual format, uh, but I would prefer an interlinear format. Well, uh, here you go. You've got your interlinear format. And uh, if you ever did work through, say, the kind of um, uh, Ber Berlitz manual where you do have the interlinear format, uh, you'll have known uh, there are times when just for some reason or other you, you think to yourself, oh, it would be nice if the, the target language were on top or, if it, uh, or on the bottom, but with a book there was never anything you could do about that. Well, here there is. You can switch that around. And if you uh, have ever tried to use the um, a shadowing methodology for really working your way through an Asimil manual the way I always did, um, you'll know that uh, you go through different stages. Initially, uh, you want to just listen to it and not look at anything. Well, that's fine. But then there are times when you just, when you're starting out, you want to be listening to the target language and looking at the translation only. Well, it was harder to do that. Now it's uh, with this, you just click on a button and you got it. Then you get more advanced, that's when you want to look at the bilingual column. Uh, and then when you know the material, you only want to look at the translation. So, I mean, sorry, the, the original, you've got that there. Uh, and also when we're looking at the whole text, uh, people, whenever they've asked me about this, they say, you know, if you want to be able to replay or just look at a certain sentence, um, and uh, I was always working with tapes or then digitize them, just have a whole MP3 file. But with this format here, it's quite possible to just play the play the, the one sentence that you want. So um, for those of you who are digital natives, but you're uh, interested in the same sort of methodology that uh, I use, you don't want to have a book in your hand, uh, but you want something like an ASIMIL method, and you want to uh, say, okay, I've got the, the basics down, and now I want to go to intermediate level, I would say go find, I think it's a parakeet, not a parrot, uh, go find Poodle, uh, and encourage them to develop more materials, because when it comes to taking older materials and not just uh, digitizing them here, making them available, but doing something with them, uh, giving them new life. Uh, this is the only uh, place that I know that's doing that. So as an answer to um, the question, am I aware of really exciting, cutting edge uh, materials and places to go? Uh, this is where I would keep my eye for the time being. 
And with that, I think that I have concluded my series of overviews of uh, materials and methods of language learning, and I hope this is helpful to you.